Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for giving a little bit of your time to watch another short devotional message. Maybe one more today for the children. I've got this shoebox with me. And inside this shoebox, there's something that's living. And I want you to try to guess what it is. There's something inside this shoebox here today that's living. If you watched the devotional recently, you remember that we did one on the hedgehog that we found up at the garden. Well, it's certainly not a hedgehog inside this box, but it's something that's still very much alive, something that's living. It's not a hamster. It's not a gerbil. It's not a rabbit. It's not a guinea pig. I'll give you a clue. The one inside this box has got like a leathery kind of a back, a leathery kind of a skin. Any ideas? I'll give you another clue. The thing that is living inside of this box here is perhaps the oldest living thing in the world. I'll give you another clue. The thing that is inside this box, while it is living, it doesn't move, but it speaks. I think some of you perhaps have maybe guessed what's inside the box. I'll bring it out, and here it is. It's the Bible, this lovely leather-bound Bible. I've had this Bible for quite a number of years. I got it whenever I was a student in Bible college. I remember writing the date inside, 2005. So about 16 years ago, got this uh, Bible, the living word of God. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And that word quick there, it means living. This book is a living book. It's not a dead book. It's a living book. It's not an outdated book. It's right up to date. It's the book of the ages. And the Spirit of God gave us this book. In fact, it's really a library of books, a library of 66 books, 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament, 400 silent years in between. And it's God's living word, the living and eternal word. Jesus Christ said, forever, O God, thy word is settled in heaven. Heaven and earth, he said, may pass away, but thy words shall never pass away. Maybe today you wonder, well, where did the Bible come from? Where did we get the Bible. How can you have so much confidence in the Bible? A book that's written, as many people would say, by men. Yes, in a sense, penned by men, but inspired by God. Paul said, as he wrote to Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And the word inspired means God breathed. You remember how when the Savior was in the wilderness, he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And that's really what the word inspiration means. God breathed. It's the God breathed word. The God breathed book. All scripture is given by inspiration. All scripture is God breathed. All scripture proceedeth from the mouth of God. That's why we often talk about the verbal inspiration of Scripture. Now maybe you say, well, how does that work if it's God-breathed and God-inspired and proceeds from God's mouth, and yet we read about the letters of Peter and the letters of John and the letters of Paul and the prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and the books of Moses. How did these men know how to write down or what the breathed word of God was? Well, God's servant Peter, in one of his letters, answers that question. He says, no prophecy of Scripture is of private interpretation. And what he meant by that was that no word of God, no prophecy, no promise, nothing in the word of God is by private interpretation. In other words, nothing that is written in the word of God is brought up by the ingenuity or the intellect or the opinions or ideas of men. It's not for of private interpretation. It wasn't that men like Peter or Paul or John got together and thought, well, what should we write? No, the Bible says, holy men of God, men that were set apart by, by God, for God, holy men of God, spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 
And that's how the Spirit of God inspired these men to write the words that they did. He moved them, he directed them like the breath of God, the wind of God, as a ship would set up the sail and the wind would carry it and drive it along. So these men were carried and driven and guided and directed and empowered by the Spirit of God to write down the very words of God. Now, one very valid argument for the inspiration of Scripture is the unity that there is in the Bible. It took over 1,500 years to write the Bible. You've got about 40 different authors, many of them from different places, different personalities, different characteristics, and obviously with the time scale, 1,500 years, many of them had never seen each other, met each other, or even heard of each other. And the Old Testament was completed 400 years before the commencement of the New Testament. And so you would think that if these men, these 40 authors approximately, different places, different personalities, thoughts, ideas, and opinions, were to write down what they thought about God, that the Bible would be full of contradictions. And yet there's a wonderful unity of theme in the Bible, and that's the person and work of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Whenever he met the two discouraged saints on the road to Emmaus, they were down in the mouth, they were discouraged, they had lost hope, and there was no light at the end of the tunnel. The Lord himself drew near and went with them. And then beginning at Moses and in all the prophets and all the word of God, he spoke unto them the things concerning himself. Christ is the theme of the Old Testament scriptures. That's why he said to the Pharisees of his day in John's Gospel, Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think that ye have life, and they are they that testify of me. The Bible is God's book. It's the best instruction before leaving earth. It's a lamp to your feet. It's a light to your path. It's like milk. It's like meat. It's like manna to your souls. It's the good seed. It's a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. It's forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth shall pass away. God said his word shall never pass away. And the entrance of this living book, the entrance of God's word, brings light and life and liberty. It can point you to the cross. It can guide you through life and direct your footsteps to heaven and home. What a privilege, friends, to have the living word of God. Take time to read it and may God bless you in the days ahead. See you next time.